How many organic compounds do you think exist? Well, current estimates say that there is over 10 million known organic compounds. Fortunately, we're not going to be studying all 10 million in this course. Because there are so many different organic compounds, chemists have found ways to make the study of organic chemistry much easier. They do this by dividing organic compounds into different types or classes. What we're going to do in this video is introduce some of the basic types of organic compounds that we'll be learning about this semester. We've already been introduced to one of the simplest classes of organic compounds. These are the compounds known as hydrocarbons, which are composed of only carbons and hydrogens. Within the class of hydrocarbons, we can divide these into three different kinds. The alkanes are composed of carbon and hydrogen, and possess only carbon-carbon single bonds. The alkenes are also only carbon and hydrogen, but with the difference that there is at least one carbon-carbon double bond. An alkyne is again a hydrocarbon, but there is at least one carbon-carbon triple bond present in the carbon chain. As we've already seen, hydrocarbons can be cyclic, straight chains, or branched compounds. So as you can see, it's clear that there are all kinds of compounds that we need to learn about in organic chemistry. Another class of organic compounds we'll learn about are the alkyl halides. Th these are very much like the hydrocarbons, except that one of the hydrogens is replaced by a halogen atom, either fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Another type of organic compound are known as alcohols. Alcohols are identified because they have an OH or hydroxyl group replacing one of the hydrogens on a carbon. Another type of organic compound also containing oxygen are known as ethers. Ethers have an oxygen bonded in between two carbon atoms. One more important class of organic compounds is the class known as the amines. Amines are recognized because they have a nitrogen single bonded to a carbon. The nitrogen could have additionally attached to it either carbons or hydrogens. As we begin to study particular classes or types of organic compounds, we'll see that even within a particular class, it will be important to distinguish between how particular atoms are bonded within that class of compounds. For example, we can classify alkyl halides, alcohols, and amines depending on how the halogen, hydroxyl groups, or nitrogens are bonded. Let's begin by looking at how to classify the alkyl halides and alcohols. When we look at alkyl halides and alcohols, we can classify them based on the carbon that is bonded to either the halogen or the oxygen atom. Let's look at a few examples of classifying alkyl halides and alcohols. In this first example, we have a molecule that has two carbons, and one of the carbons is bonded to a bromine atom. The carbon that's attached to the bromine will be indicated with an asterisk. This carbon with an asterisk is directly bonded to one other carbon. We'd call this kind of alkyl halide a primary alkyl halide because the carbon attached to the halogen atom is bonded to only one carbon. In the second example, we have a hydroxyl group bonded to the second carbon in a three carbon chain. Again, the carbon bonded to the hydroxyl group will be indicated with an asterisk. This carbon with the asterisk is directly bonded to two other carbons. Therefore, we would call this alcohol a secondary alcohol. In a third example, in which a carbon bonded to the halogen is directly bonded to three other carbons, we would call this a tertiary alkyl halide because the carbon attached to the halogen atom is directly bonded to three carbon atoms. Amines are classified differently from alkyl halides and alcohols. 
When we classify amines, instead of focusing on the carbon attached to the nitrogen, what we do is we focus directly on the nitrogen itself. In this first example, where we have a nitrogen bonded to one carbon, we would call this a primary amine. In the second example, the nitrogen is directly bonded to two carbons, and we would indicate that this is a secondary amine. In the third example, the nitrogen is directly bonded to three carbons, and we would call this a tertiary amine.